arrays. Everyone knows what is arrays. Okay? So what is arrays? Arrays are basically continuous memory allocation of the fixed data type, right? So if you can say about like we are having this array of fixed data type, let's say two, three, four, five, six. This is arrays. These are called these are called what elements. These are called elements. Okay. And uh, the values which we are going to use here is like 0, 1, 2, 3. These are called indices. Okay. These are indices, these are elements. Okay. Now, now the thing is, you know, I in the prerequisite uh, is like you know how to just traverse over the arrays, iterating using the for loop and proceeding further. Okay, now that's fine. Now we are going to, if you, if you want to know about more uh, about arrays, we'll proceed in solving a problem. This is one of the, one of the great problem I'm, I will say. And the problem solving, first we will discuss, 80% of the time we'll discuss on solving the problem and then 20% will code over lead code. Right? One array has been given to you. Okay? Let's say two, seven, 11, Target has been given to you. What is target? Target, let's say nine. Okay. What you have to do? What you have to do? You have given array of integers. These are what? These are integers. Integers array. These are integers array. What you have to do? You have to find or return. Find or return two indices. Two indices in the form of array, in the form of int array, such that the value belongs to both two indices is going to give you this target sum, basically the two sum. Okay. So what are those indices here, which is going to, uh, what are those two values, which we are going to sum up, these two values, which we are going to sum up and reach to the target. What is target? Well, the green green uh, cursor. If you can see the green lines and all, this is uh, I'm talking about. This is like 2 plus 7, which is going to give you 9. And 2 plus 7, 2 belongs to 0th index. 7 belongs to 1st index. Correct? So we have to return 0, 1. This is the problem step. Okay? I have told here, like we have given integers and we have to return the integer array with two indices okay now here now here i uh, an interviewer will expect a prob uh, a question or a problem statement problem from the interviewer is that exactly one solution will be there into the given problem or there can be other for example 27 is also so have the target value as nine, and here we will have one eight. One eight also implies to the sum of one eight is also giving you the target value as nine. So are we good with one plus eight only? Uh, means like the indices which we are going to give here will be two, three, and zero, one. So which indices values are we going to return? So can we return any? Or can we return on exactly something? So we have not told anything specific. So we can return any, right? This is the first point. The second point which we can talk about here is like, what will be the order of indices? Order of indices, which, which an interviewer is looking for. You can ask this question like, do you want to see orders in ascending order or something else? So these things you have to clarify with the interviewer. So as it, I have not mentioned, so there won't be any order. So indices values can be one zero also. All right, these two things are fine. Now the third thing, now the third thing, let's proceed to the approach, approach. Okay, so the first approach, which is the brute force one, which I wanted to uh, cover it up here. Always, always try to start with the brute force approach doesn't matter if you're not able to get the optimized solution in a single shot. The main just is like you can't get optimized all solution in a single shot. Okay. 
So unless and until you have marked the solution, if you have not marked, you will uh, you will not get. So try to find the uh, try to find the brute force approach to solve this uh, solve this problem. So for example, if you can see, if you can see, uh, based on the given test case, based on the given given test case, this is like let's say I will start one value from I, or in words English sentences, if I want to tell here. I am going to check for all those two values. Okay, summing which I am getting sum as nine. I am going to sum all those values, uh, or or just try to find all those values, summing which I am going to get nine. For example, here if we are going to get two seven, and summing two seven, we are going to get nine, right? So how we are going to make it up? So can I run? Necessary to, for example, one values will be taken for all i. I is going to take for all the values, and for each value of i, I am going to check for j. For example, when i is two, and j will be like two seven eleven fifty. Okay, i is seven, so we'll have two eleven fifty. But here we have to make a constraint. I should not be equal to j. Correct. Because I don't want, so let's say there will be a scenario where seven plus seven is going to give you fourteen. I don't want the similar numbers, similar indices should be used. So I want to refrain it up, refrain this indices with this value itself. Okay. Now, so this is clear. I am going to how the algorithm look like for i from indices from zero to n, for j indices from zero to n. Okay. What is the next thing? I not equal to J. I not equal to J. What it's going to do? We are going to just check the sum. Sum is is nine or the target. Let's say we'll say target. Okay. If the sum is equal to sum equal equal to target. Okay. We'll just persist our result. Result. Okay. What will be the time complexity, guys? We don't have uh, means like the uh, the the uh, separate sessions on the time and the space complexity. I will tell you, we'll have build up and we'll see various scenarios how we are going to reduce the time and space space complexity. That is much more beneficial as per the previous students' feedback. Okay, so tell me here what will be the time complexity? Exactly, n squared. How for others? See, these n, this n is basically telling me n elements, n elements of the given array, of the given array, right? And this is also the same thing because we are we are giving the array of length n. Now the thing is, we are doing what for each element i, for each element i, we are iterating through all the n. Elements. Where i will be like i belongs to zero to n. That means for zeroth element, uh, we are running for the n times. First element running for the n times. Nth element running for the n times. Okay. So how many times our loop is running? It's like n squared times. But there can be a best case or there can be a worst case, right? Best case means the example which we have seen right now here. For example, two seven eight, and the target we are looking at nine. Here itself, we found our result initially, which has not covered up order of n square. That is called the best case. What is best case? The best possible optimization or the iteration at which we found our result. What is the worst case? For example, let's say two is here, seven is here, and uh, two is here. Okay, and there are other elements here. That means we have to iterate till the full n square constraint. So that is going to tell you about the worst case. So the time complexity is order of n square. In the space com this is like time complexity. Space complexity is order of one. Order of one we usually resemble that we have used the constant space. Constant space. Now, uh, do you think interviewer is going to accept the solution? No, they will say, hmm. Okay, that's great. But the thing is, like, we have to optimize. Is there a way or is there a window to optimize this time complexity, right? So, 
let's see there are two things okay one thing i wanted to tell you here is that x let's think about some linear equation x plus y is equal to z x plus y is equal to z right now consider this how we are going to approach this solution let's consider this z is our target this z is our target which is 9 correct and we have one array given array is like 2 7 11 15 2 7 11 15 now is there a way while iterating let's say while iterating i have this x considered as the elements which we are iterating for example let's say array of like okay now can i find y is equal to z minus arr or or if i will say target minus arr of y target minus arr of y okay now if somehow this value is already been present in the map in the in the in some data structure okay we have persisted this value and we are checking whether this value and this value if we found we can return the indices of these two but here the the blocker just think about the blocker blocker is like we will get the indices here okay we will get the indices of the current element which we are iterating. Let's say I am iterating using i. I will get the I, uh, I index of this current one. For target minus ARR of i, we will not have the indices. Okay, we will not have the indices. So, what are the two things required here? We require first thing as target minus ARR of i. Okay, and and some index, some index which at which this target minus arr of y is stored let's say this is i and let's say the target minus arr i is stored at j so can we get these two uh, these two indices in linear time using some extra steps now we are going one level deeper how we are going one level deeper let's say 2, 7, 11, 15. Okay. What I said, let's try to find an algorithm to proceed with. Let's see. So this is like I. This is like I. Okay. What I'm doing, this is a map. It's a map. We have taken a hash map or a dictionary. Hash map. Hash map data structure. Okay. <coughs> So hash map, what is going to, what is hash map? First of all, if you want to know, it's like a combination of key value pairs. Key is unique. At this point of time, just we want to understand this. Key is the unique value. So while iterating, I'm going to see the complement value or the, uh, if you can see here, like this value, we are looking for this Y value, target minus ER of Y. If Y is already available in the map, what is y means 9 minus 2 is available in the map no it's not available in the map so what we will do current value we'll put it up here along with index can we do this now i am proceeding further now i am proceeding further at this point of time can we see what is the y we are looking for y right this is the y value so what is the y we will have 9 minus 7, which is 2. So can we can we say this 2 is present here in the map? Yes. Okay, now you can see this is like val and this is like idx. Okay, so can we say one index we will get from here, the other index we are getting from my current iteration. So now you can say this is like your y, and this is your x and x plus y is equal to giving you target value, which is nine. Correct. And we got two indices. 
will return it away. Let's see one more example, okay, where the values are farther, not like here. Let's say 8, 2, 1, 6, 3. Okay, and again, let's take the target value as 9. Let's make it 4. Okay, now 8. 8 is present in the map. No. We are looking for not 8, target minus 8. Target minus 8 is present in the map. 9 minus 8 is present in the map. No. Then we will put, we are iterating from here. We will put 8 here. With value 0. Correct. Now proceeding further. We are here now. We are here now. This is my name. <coughs> now, so here, target minus 2. 7 present in the map? No. Put two, which is at current value one. Now proceeding further. Target minus four, nine minus four is present in the map. No, we just put four at index two. Now proceed further. Target minus this current value six present in the map. No, we put it up here. Okay. Now proceed further. Target minus current value, which is x, right? Six is present in the map. Yes, it's present in the map. We got our result. We got our result. This is our result, right? So can we say two indices will be one is four, the other is three, which is like three, four. Can we return this? Can we return this? And what will be the time complexity? What we have done, we okay, in any interval. If someone is going to ask you what is the time complexity, what are you going to say? N or order of n, right? Something like that. Avoid this. Try to avoid this because the thing is, interviewer don't know what is n, what is order of n. Second thing, interviewer don't want to listen single word answer. Is interested in your analogy and logic behind how you deduce it. In, in spite of telling this, to say, while iterating the full array, we are comparing each and every value, okay, with the complement value. So, in the worst case, we have to iterate fully. So, it will be order of the number of elements. So, let's consider the number of elements as n. So, we are having the order of n is the number of elements. Okay. What is the space complexity? Again, for the space complexity, you have to say the same thing. While iterating, we have to find the complement or the y value which we have discussed. Yeah. So in the worst case, we have to put all the elements into the hash map. So here the space complex. So understood. Let's code it up then. All right. Okay. We are going to use Java here and uh, problem statement. You know. Now we have to code it up. So what we said, we are going to use a dictionary map of value and integer. So we'll say this as val idx map. Now, what next? We are going to do here for and i equal to zero, i less than numbers of what I am doing, I am going to iterate the full given array. Right? Now, just take the complement is equal to target minus thumbs up. We are considering this as uh, this as the complement. If this com what we are going to check if the map contains this complement or not. If map contains well idx map dot contains contains key as a complement. What we are going to do? We are going to return all. return new int. Return new int indices. We want indices. So well idx map dot get complement and the current idx. What is the current idx? Current idx is i, right? If that is not the case, if that is not the case. What we are going to do? Well idx idx map put put the value 
and its index, right? Value and its index. Else return. Okay. Now this part we have not discussed. What if there is no solution at all? But in the problem statement, it has said it is having exactly one solution. It could return anything, right? Either through exception or uh, just return minus one minus one. It doesn't matter because because your flow won't reach to this place. All right. Let's see if it's going to work or not. Mm -hmm. We are good, I think.